Romans chapter 5. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5. Verse number 1, we read, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death hath passed upon all men, for all have sinned. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Last Tuesday morning, as I was reading the Daily Mirror, not often that I read the newspapers, but on this occasion, I read the Daily Mirror. My mind and my thoughts were captured and captivated by a headline that was there in the second or third page. The headline that captured my attention was this, a packed list of top stars lost to the curse of 2016. A, to, a packed list of top stars, celebrities, lost, it read, to the curse of 2016. It is reported that 2016 has been the one year where so many celebrities have met death. Eighty-two well-known celebrities the world over in 2016 met with death and were ushered into the great eternity. Ed Stewart, radio and TV presenter, died the 9th of January, 16. The next day, David Bowie, pop artist, died the 10th of January, 2016. Four days later, Alan Rickman, an English actor, died on the 14th of January, 2016. Sir Terry Wogan, television presenter, died the 31st of January, 2016. The same day, Frank Finlay, English actor, he too died the 31st of January, 16. Tony Warren, the creator of Coronation Street, died the 2nd of March, 16. Nancy Reagan, the 6th of March, 
16. Paul Daniels, entertainer, died the 17th of March, 16. Ronnie Corbett, English comedian, died the 31st of March, 16. Merle Haggard, died the 6th of April, 16. David Guest, music presenter, died the 14th of April, 16. Victoria Wood, English comedian, died the 20th of April, 16. The next day, Prince, pop artist, died the 21st of April, 16. Muhammad Ali, the boxing great, died the 3rd of June, 16. Carolina Hearn, English comedian, died the 2nd of July, 16. Gene Wilder, actor, dies the 29th of August, 16. Gene Alexander, who played Hilda Ogden in Coronation Street, died the 14th of October, 16. Rick Parfit, guitarist for the group Status Quo, died Christmas Eve, 2016. George Michael, pop artist, died Christmas Day, 2016. Carrie Fisher, actor, dies the 27th of December, 16. Her mother, her mother, Debbie Reynolds, dies the next day, the 28th of December, 16. The world calls this tonight the celebrity curse of 2016. But let me tell you something about the curse of 2016. It was no different to the curse of 2015, no difference to the curse of 2014, no difference to the curse of 2013. It will be no difference to the curse of 2017, 2018, 2019. It's the same curse tonight. But all this reminds us, all this warns us tonight, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And I want to bring you to my text this evening that brings us to the very root of the celebrity curse of 2016. But it's not only the celebrity curse tonight, it's the curse of every year. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12, we read these words, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned tonight. Let me tell you the curse of 2016 wasn't death. The curse of 16 wasn't death. The curse of 2016, as it always has been down through the years and generation, is sin tonight. Sin's the curse. Wherefore, as by one man, my text reads tonight, sin entered the world. Let me tell you about the curse of 2016 tonight. Sin is the fundamental cause of the curse. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered the world. People need to understand something tonight. Sin's the greatest curse in this world. It's not death. Sin's the greatest curse. Sin's the fundamental cause of what the, what the papers call the curse of 2016. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered the world. Death didn't come before sin. Death didn't come into the world before sin. Sin came into the world before death. And let's remember this tonight. God spoke of death before even sin entered the world. God spoke of death before even sin entered the world, never mind death entered the world. Let me say this tonight, God was the first one to mention death, God. 
You remember Eve? She was the second one to mention death. You remember this? God was the first person to mention death. You remember what he said to Adam? In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. I wonder what Adam thought of that. Thou shalt surely die. Remember what I said to you there? Eve, she was the second one to speak of death, and death hadn't come into the world then. She said to the serpent, but we have been told by God that if we eat of the forbidden fruit, we shall surely die. You remember this, the devil was the third one to speak of death. He told them, ye shall not surely die. Do you know that's the devil's ministry tonight? Do you know what the devil's ministry is tonight? The devil's ministry is making God out to be a liar. That's the devil's ministry tonight. Making God out to be a liar. Do you know what the devil said? Thou shalt not surely die. Do you know what Eve did that day in the Garden of Eden? She did what a whole lot of people's do in the day. They're believing the devil's lie before they believe God's truth. Oh, they would say, I, I, I'm too good to be lost, sir. I'm a good, upright person. Do you see if you say that tonight, or you think that tonight, that you're too good to be lost, you're making God out a liar. Or perhaps there's somebody perhaps maybe thinking this evening, well, I'll tell you the truth, I'm too bad to be saved. God could forgive me. Let me tell you, you're making God out equally to be a liar. You know, friend, this evening, the fundamental cause of this curse tonight is sin. You see, the papers won't talk about sin tonight. You'll never get the TV presenters to talk about sin because the devil has them blinded. No, 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 friend. Listen, here's, here's the root tonight. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, that's through Adam this evening, right from the very beginning. The curse came when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. Ah, wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world. Do you know, friend, tonight what brought sin into the world? Because man believed the devil and wouldn't believe God. Man obeyed the devil, disobeyed God. If you want an answer tonight, if you want an explanation tonight, why do people die? It's because man chose to believe the devil and chose to disbelieve God. They chose in the Garden of Eden way back then to disobey God. And that's why, friends, people die. Let me say something else tonight. No person ever became a sinner. People talk about the the life of sin. People talk about drink and drugs. I think if people stopped talking about those people and started praying for them, it would do them far better. People talk about their reckless lifestyle. Let me tell you, friends, nobody becomes a sinner because they take drugs. Nobody becomes a sinner because they drink. Nobody becomes a sinner at all. Nobody becomes a sinner. Every person is born a sinner. Do you know what the Word of God says tonight? The Word of God, I'm not taking you to the Daily Mirror tonight. I'm taking you to the Word of God. The Word of God says, Behold, we are born in sin. No man, no woman has ever became a sinner. 
because everyone has been born in sin and shape and iniquity. And you know what James chapter 1 verse 15 says, sin? Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do you see the fundamental cause of this curse tonight? It's stamped upon us from the word go. Ronnie Corbett died, all these stars, Terry Wogan, Jean Alexander, Ricky Perfect, George Michael, all these people has died, died for the same reason that everybody else dies. It's because of sin. Listen, sinless infants die tonight. We infants that never knew how to do wrong, we harmless babies die. Moral upright people die too. Religious people die. Godly people die. But why do they die? They die because what happened in the Garden of Eden. Wherefore, as by one man's sin. Entered the world. Every celebrity who died in 2016 died because of sin. They died for the same reason that everybody else dies tonight, sin. But let me say this tonight, sin is the curse this evening. But then secondly, my text talks about the factual clarity of the curse. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. Nobody can deny that tonight. Tell me how you can deny this this evening. Tell me how you can argue with this this evening. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, As in Adam all die. That's why pop stars die, because as in Adam all die. As in Adam film stars die. As in Adam celebrities die. As in Adam tonight the rich and famous die. As in Adam kings and queens die. As in Adam we all die. First Corinthians fifteen twenty two. You can write it up the side of every hearse. If there's one scripture you can write up the side of every hearse, it's this one: "As in Adam, all die." The forgotten truth in today's world that puzzles so many, and there shouldn't be puzzled. Second Samuel fourteen and fourteen. You know what it says? For we must needs die. You can write that over every headstone tonight of every celebrity. We must needs die. Why did George Michael die? Because he he must needs die. Why do people die? Because we must needs die tonight. That's why people hate the gospel tonight. That's why many hate the truth tonight. Because people cannot prove the Bible wrong. Every hearse, every coffin, every funeral proves the Bible tonight to be true. Wherefore, as by one man, Sin entered the world, and death by sin. 1984, 
Tommy Cooper was on stage at the London Palladium. Everything was going well. I remember watching it. His assistant come to put on a big coat, big gold coat. And I remember he looked at the ground like that. And suddenly he staggered and slumped. And the place erupted in laughter. I thought this was Tommy Cooper at his best. It was Tommy Cooper at his worst because death had just appeared in the stage and nobody knew it. And in front of millions, people watched Tommy Cooper die on stage. Death can appear in the stage. 1974, the, the carry-on Actor Sid James was in the theater. He was playing this part where he lay down on the couch to go for a sleep. And they waited for him to come in with his line to wake him up again, but he never moved. And the place roared with laughter, thinking this was mighty. But Sid James was lying dead. And the next thing the theater production team called, is there a doctor in the house? And the next thing the place erupted again, but they weren't laughing in too many moments time when Sid James was lying dead. Do you see, friends, tonight death doesn't take a holiday. Death is the greatest preacher, for I'll tell you one thing, nobody will stop death from preaching anywhere. And here we have in this text, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. Death is a living proof tonight that God is true. And death is a living proof that the devil's a liar. And death is a living proof that sin is real. And death is a living proof that the Bible is true. Can you prove it wrong? The fundamental cause of the curse, the factual clarity of the curse, but here's the fearful clause of the curse. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death has passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Let me tell you, there's no escapees. All these celebrities tonight who have died in 2016 have suddenly realized there's no VIP treatment before God. There's no exceptions before God. They're realizing this now. Might have got the red carpet treatment down here, ah, but there's no special treatment. Now as they stand before God, In the light of sin tonight, in the light of death tonight, in the light of God tonight, there's no escapees. There's no VIPs in the light of sin. No exceptions. There's no VIPs tonight in the light of death. There is no exceptions. There's no VIPs tonight in the sight of God. There's no exceptions because death has passed upon all men and all have sinned in it. Can you prove that wrong? Can you prove this to be untrue tonight? Can you prove this to be unreal? The truth of it, the reality of it, stares us in the face. Death has reigned upon all men, has passed upon all men, for all have sinned this evening. Do you see Romans chapter 5 and verse 12? It's the most up-to-date news for this day's world. It's the most up-to-date for this modern age. It always was up to date. It always will be up to date. For as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death has passed upon all men, for all have sinned. 
And Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 8 says, There is no man that hath power in over the Spirit to retain the Spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. It all warns us, friends, time on earth is short. I want to finish with a joyful note tonight. The favorable call, the favorable call offending the curse. Uh, yes, offending the curse. It's John 8, 36, where the Lord Jesus says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Thank God tonight I'm free from sin tonight. Do you know what he came to do? The Lord Jesus Christ came to Calvary to take the sinner's place. He came to Calvary to take your place. He came to Calvary to take my place. And there on Calvary's cross, he suffered, he bled, and he tasted death for every man. But thank God tonight, Christ rose the third day, and he's alive forevermore. When it comes my time today, whenever that may be, I have no fear. Because you know what the Lord Jesus said? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though we were dead, yet shall he live. Boys, the moment to put me in a coffin, I'll be more alive then than I ever am now. And that's the hope tonight. And no wonder the Apostle John said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Let me name you three celebrities who proved that to be true. First of all, I want to talk about Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash in 1968 testified to this. I was hooked on drugs. I hated to wake up in the morning. I lived a life with no joy, no peace. Until I give my life to Christ, and suddenly the darkness of my life sprang into eternal light. George Foreman, the boxer, 1977, through a near-death experience, said, the greatest moment in my life, when I came under the convicting power of God, the Holy Spirit, I trusted Christ. George Foreman became an ordained minister. Stephen Baldwin, an act, American actor, was converted to Christ through watching the 9-11 attacks on television. He said, and out, he says, my outspoken opinions of my faith has cost me many great film roles, but it'll never cost me heaven. Steve McQueen, the great actor who acted in The Great Escape and The Magnificent Seven a short time, a few weeks before he died, met Billy Graham, in an airport in Mexico. He heard that Billy Graham was coming, and he went out to meet him. He met two of them, met in the back of Graham's limousine. And after a few moments, Billy Graham led him to saving faith in the Lord Jesus. And Steve McQueen asked him this question, how can I be sure that someone with my past can die with that hope of eternal life? Billy Graham pointed him to Titus chapter 1, verse 2, and this is what it reads, In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. When Steve McQueen died in hospital, he was found with his finger resting in Titus 1, verse 2. Thank God tonight in the spite of sin, in spite of death, there's eternal life tonight, and it's in the Lord Jesus. Why don't you come to me? Come to him and know life eternal. May God bless his word to our hearts this evening. We're not going to sing a